In this video, we're excited to introduce you to the math section of the Digital SAT. If you missed the reading and writing section, click the link over here. Also, be sure to like and subscribe for more information regarding the Digital SAT. Let's hop right over to the math section. First off, I've got some good news for all of my mathematically challenged friends out there. You're able to use a calculator throughout the entire section. Now, there's no need to do calculations by hand. Not bad, right? Just as the reading and the writing are combined into one section, the calculator part and the non-calculator part of the math section are now one. And don't worry about finding a calculator if you don't have one. A digital calculator is embedded into your computer's testing page, so there's no need to bring it to the testing center, although I encourage you to bring the tool that you're most familiar with. Another piece of good news is that the word problems, or in-context questions as they put it, within the math section have been shortened. The College Board listened to the feedback that said long, wordy problems may hinder students from showing their true math skills. After all, this section of the Digital SAT is all about math, not reading comprehension. So, they've cut down the length of word problems to make it easier and more straightforward for students from all backgrounds to show their true skills, regardless of their reading ability. The distribution of math question types has changed a bit. The once wordy problem solving and data analysis are now shorter and less frequent as compared to more straightforward algebra, geometry, and advanced math questions. But don't be fooled. There may be fewer of these word problems, but they still make up a significant portion of the overall test and represent skills you'll need further down the road. Another interesting change to the math section applies to free response questions, or FRQs. Originally, when the test was paper-based using bubble sheets, the slots were limited to four bubbles with no positive or negative signs. This meant that, by design, possible answers for FRQs in math were limited to positive values between 0 to 9,999, down to the thousandth place in decimals. The digital SAT, however, now accepts negative values and digits up to five digits, making the range of possible answers for FRQs in math between negative 99,999 and positive 99,999. One funny glitch I discovered while exploring this part, though it may have been fixed by now, is the limit of digits. You can type in negative 99,999, up to six characters, but you cannot add a negative sign in front of numbers you've already written. But don't panic if you forgot to add a negative sign in front of a five-digit answer. Simply retype it from the beginning with a negative sign first. The graphing calculator feature by Desmos is now embedded in the math section. And remember, you're still allowed to bring your good old TI series calculator that you're familiar with. The good thing is you won't need to worry about your battery running out because you can always jump on the embedded Desmos graphing calculator. You can give it a try on any web browser at desmos.com slash calculator. You'll notice that it's nothing fancy, but it'll do the basics and graph and plot functions. It's especially powerful for those who prefer solving questions graphically. It could be your open lane to a higher score. Although sporting different names, the domains for digital SAT math haven't changed much. Algebra is up to 35% of the total math section, as compared to 33% on the paper test. The portion of advanced math is 35% of the section, up from 28%. Both algebra and advanced math sections cover more or less the same concepts as before. As mentioned, problem solving and data analysis changed the most in terms of frequency. What used to be 29% now only makes up 15% of the test. The reduction is most likely due to the overall shortening of the questions. Finally, the geometry and trigonometry category is 15% of the test. It checks basic geometry and trigonometry skills just as before. Worried about reaching the finish line? Don't stress! With the Digital SAT's updated sections, it's important for you to know that the content and format of the test remain more or less the same, regardless of whether it is taken on paper or digitally. The focus should be on preparation. Familiarize yourself with the types of questions, passages, and format, and work hard to develop strong skills. 
That wraps up part three of our digital SAT introduction. So, what do you think? Did the information I have provided give you a better understanding of the digital SAT? It's a journey, that's for sure. One that I'll guide you along as we move on to part three of our tutorial. Don't worry, I'll be with you every step of the way as you prepare for the test. Whether you're just starting your preparation journey or you're in your final stretch, I've got you covered A to Z. So, stay tuned and let's get you ready to crush the digital SAT. See you at the races.